Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and today I'm actually taking advantage of what might be our last ice fishing opportunity here in the southeast part of the state with all this rain we're getting this week. The ice might be gone. But speaking of ice fishing, Jimmy and I both spent some time on Burt Lake in the northern lower on two separate occasions recently. I was up there for the Mark Martin Ice Fishing Vacation School. Lots of folks out on the ice for that event. We had a blast up there. You won't want to miss that. And Jimmy also spent some time on Burt Lake too. Well, that's right, Jenny. Just a few days after the Mark Martin Fishing School, I was able to get back out on Burt Lake with a couple of locals so we can see how they like to fish that lake. We're also going to have a really cool walleye cheeks recipe this week from our friends at Antlers Fireside Grill. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's destination since 1988. Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By the Michigan Fly Fishing Club, presenting this year's 2018 Midwest Fly Fishing Expo. The expo is coming to Metro Detroit on March 10th and 11th at the Sports and Expo Center at Macomb Community College. For information and details, MidwestFlyFishingExpo.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at AnglerQuestPontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. A couple of weeks ago here at Brave Hearts Estate in Pelston, there were lots of fish stories going around, but these stories were all true. Walleye pro Mark Martin and his pro staff were on hand to dole out words of wisdom at the ice fishing vacation school happening on nearby Burt Lake this weekend. Soaking it all in were some of our nation's veterans and some of Mark's students. After a quick lesson, it was time to get ready for the following morning. This is our uh, landing or launch area, so to speak, uh, where we're going to take off uh, out onto Burt Lake tomorrow morning about 7 o'clock. We uh, have a nice uh, clam tent right down there full of live bait. Everybody gets to get a scoop down there, but this is where it all happens right here. And How many folks are heading out on the ice tomorrow? Uh, there's going to be about close to 50 or so. <laughs> we don't. Have, otherwise, it's mass confusion in the dark because they don't can't see any of this right here, and it really makes it difficult for us to put flags on vehicles and get everything organized to where you know we can be sure that nobody gets lost. We can put lights on the pros that so we can follow each other a lot better. Safety first. That's what this is all about. This is just part of the safety thing. Of, being able to get everybody staged so everybody's here it, doing stuff in the dark people get hurt yeah so be easy safe takeoff in the morning yep exactly <laughs> and everybody's ready how about yeah. that we got to be ready <laughs> one student who was ready to go was Peyton Hines Peyton took up ice fishing this winter and is loving every minute of it I asked her if she had any advice for others who are interested in joining the sport well I, I think the best thing to do is try and find other other experts other people who've been doing it um, get some tips from them, some ideas on where to start, and just start picking up little pieces of equipment and try it out. Go out with other people first till you get a little bit more confidence being out on the ice. Um, and then go out a few times solo just to some easy walkout lakes if you don't have, you know, a snowmobile or four-wheeler to get out and just start getting comfortable with it. And um, as you build more confidence, then you can start 
buying other equipment and at that point you'll probably have a much better idea of um, you know the type of equipment that you need too. Great advice for first timers. Speaking of first timers, we got word that Troy and Amy Near had connected with their very first Burt Lake walleye. They fish these waters quite often and were happy with the catch. Hey guys, how's it going in here? Good. Yeah, real well. Yeah, what's been happening so far this morning? Slow at first, but here we got a walleye. Nice. Oh yeah. So you got that one? Yes. How'd it happen? How'd it come in? Um, didn't see it on uh, Lawrence at all, and uh, just kind of hammered on a green and uh, silver hammered Cleo. So. All right. A couple other anglers enjoying success were Rex McNutt with a gorgeous brown trout and Dan Clary with his first ever walleye through the ice. For Mark Martin, that's what this school is all about. It's, it's cool to hear that uh, the students and the soldiers and the husbands and wives are catching fish. And, you know, what we have here, you know, in... Uh, uh, Pelston and Burt Lake is, you know, we I love fishing this area because it's a small community, but it's a big lake. I mean, this lake is huge. I mean, everybody says Holton Lake's big, and we just got off of that. I, in some ways, I think this is bigger, definitely deeper, but it's a different type of lake and uh, it has, you know, some pretty cool fish in it, but it's fun to have all these people. We have, you know, we learn. See, that's one thing, you know, we're pros, but we're not so proud that we can't, you know, see things that are right in front of our eyes either. So we're listening to each other talk, gleaning from each other so that the next time we go out, we can put in practice what Pat said last night. I'll try what I said. Maybe Pat will try or somebody else will try. So we're up in the game for the ice fishermen. So that's what the important part is. Another very important part of ice fishing is keeping your strength up with a good hot meal. So at high noon, the masses battled the wind and made their way back to shore for an amazing lunch. The good folks from Brave Hearts Estate, Real Liberty, and Social Responsibility volunteered their time and resources to provide chili, hot dogs, and some mouth-watering elk kebabs on the grill. The crew shared stories of their day so far, and even though the food was great, the fishing excitement called them back to the shanties. Probably one of the most excited to be here was student angler Wesley. Right after lunch, Wes had some action at his spot. Hey, hey, Wes. Hey, hey, Jenny. Tell me what's going on in well, here. Well, my name's Wesley R. Brubaker. I'm from Midland, Michigan, and I'm actually 32 years old, and I'm first time I'm ice fishing Burt Lake, and I just caught a nice brown trout, but I reeled him in, but Jeff helped me gaff, gaff him. Awesome. Let's see this thing. Sure thing, Jenny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's a big boy. Yeah. First brown I ever caught throughout my life. Beautiful, really. First brown trout. I've been 32 years old. I'm 32 years old. I've been trying the last 10 years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I've caught walleye and I caught brown, but I'm hoping to get a big marble eye soon. Oh, yeah. And just a matter of fact, Jenny, so I caught, here's a good fish kiss for him heading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another student who was picking away at the fish was Jean Couture, who found a beautiful walleye and later in the day, a burbot, also known as eel pout. Mark says his ice fishing vacation school serves a purpose on a couple of different levels. It's basically something that you educate in the public and you educate uh, the, the students. They go back and they fish with their friends and they help you know their friends catch fish but being right in the school and having the hands on and listening to it you know it's like somebody telling you a story and then you tell it to somebody else and they tell it to some by the time you hear that story again it's not the same so you know that's why i tell people that you know you can get the second hand story or the third hand story but it's not like being at the school where you get the honest the truth you get to see how it's done i uh, i really enjoy ice fishing i just started doing it like a couple years ago and i found the opportunity through opportunity that uh, was operation injured soldiers uh, michelle bell i know she's one of the ladies that runs it and uh i just got uh, someone uh dropped out at the last minute and paula called me i think last week and said hey we got a spot so um it's really fun yesterday didn't catch anything but today was we got out here early and uh I think 20 minutes out we already had I marked the fish and then the second one came and bit it so Jim was another of our nation's heroes who was figuring out the walleye bite today and Scott Jones let me in on the secret to catching fish through the ice out here. All, there's not one secret 
it's 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 the entire system that he's he's developed and that, that he and his pro staff have put together over the years and it's just every little bit comes together and uh and creates a system that works the ice fishing vacation school is a system that works in more ways than one it helps introduce newcomers to the proper way to safely hit the ice it teaches seasoned anglers new tricks of the trade and most importantly at this special event it shows appreciation for our nation's veterans and honors them for their service their sacrifice and their devotion to making our great country a place where we can enjoy the freedoms of our outdoor heritage Well, as you can tell, that school is always a lot of fun that Mark Martin runs. And just a couple of days after the school got off the water, I was able to get out with a couple of locals and see how they fish Burt Lake right there in Sheboygan County. Any trip to Burt Lake here in Indian River usually means stopping at Pat and Gary's Bait Shop before hitting the ice. Have no perch minnows, it's all big blues. Okay. They'll only bite on big blues. Yeah. Pretty much tip ups only, a lot of jigging uh, with medium sized minnows, but uh, the blues are on the tip ups and that's what they'll hit up. Are we primarily perch fishing or walleye fishing today? We'll be both. Uh, we primarily perch in the daytime here and right up till dark, and that, that last hour or so will be walleyes. Dave has fished this lake for a few decades now, and it's always good to go with the locals when you can. We got on the ice on the east side of Burt Lake and quickly got set up. Dave's buddy Pat Musso was also along today, and it was really interesting to spend some time with these guys and see their rather unique tip-ups that they were using today. We're uh, out on Burt Lake today, and the late winter fishing is uh, a little different than the early fishing when they're very aggressive. Um, you, you minnows are a little bit slower, and the fish are definitely slower. They're a lot more docile than they are when the first ice happens. So the type of tip-up we're using today is an above water tip-up. It's, uh, it's an old school above water. You may have never seen anything like it because my grandfather built it in 1947. Uh, there's only about 10 of them left in the world, I think, <laughs> as far as, and I've got four of them. Um, this is a uh, dining room chair leg. This is a, an IBM typewriter spool. It's a umbrella arm on top here that allows the tip up to go up. Um, it's got a washer on it that locks the um, umbrella arm into place when the tip up goes up so that the fish can freely, freely run. But it's very quick. And when I get it set up here, I'll show you how it acts. It doesn't take very long to set up at all. The theory behind this tip up is that the minnow has the entire hole to swim in because the, the line is above the water, which means the minnow has the entire hole to swim around, up, down, any direction it wants to, which means that there's a lot more possibility for fish to find it. Where if it's above or below water tip up, the tip up uh, spool is in the water and it, the minnow only has the circumference of the spool to spin around. And, and or swim around, I should say. Hmm. And my grandfather always said, you want to fish more space in the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this off the bottom about a foot, and we're going to set a little split shot here so we know what the depth is. We're just setting that on this Dacron line here. I'm using Dacron up until a certain point, and then it's about three feet of monofilament. Okay. Perch out here this time of year love the big blue shiners. They very rarely hit on anything else. We're using a treble hook for more accuracy, and we're going to barely put it in right behind the dorsal fin so it allows the fish to swim very freely. See that? And he's ready to go. We should have fish on any minute. <laughs> no, we'll hope so. Boy, what a nice day! Beautiful out here. This is as good as it's been. In weeks. I don't know if I've ever been on Burt Lake where it's not wind's not blowing. Yeah. It's also called the Burt Lake tip up. And you know, Pat's gonna have one here in a little bit that's gonna be very similar to this but not identical. So we're putting a slip knot on top here with a piece of copper off the top. So what happens is the, the key to this tip up is that I don't need a full flag to know there's a fish on. The minute it does this, there's a perch messing with it. Okay. And if it's doing this, 
he's got it in his mouth, you don't even need to wait for it to go. You just get over there and huh. get, give it a, a, a set and you're gonna have a perch on, so. Um, and if a walleye takes it? A walleye runs? a lot of times will hold it like this, but a lot of times it'll go all the way over and it'll run a little bit and then hold it. These fish right now, will, what they're doing is mouthing the minnow and they don't, uh, they don't take it fully a lot of times and they'll sit for a while. Okay. That minnow's really active actually. It's, Tip-up fishing is definitely what these guys are primarily out here to do. Now, we did do some jigging as well, but by far and away, the blue shiners on a tip-up, well, that's the preferred tactic here on Burt Lake. And it seemed to be working as the first rod went off. Take our time when we get them near the hole here. Oh we only got a six inch hole. Hey, hey! Nice start. First one of the day. It's a great start. Way to go, young fella. Thanks. Nice hundred yard dash, too. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> It's my only exercise in the winter. Oh, that's a next, nice fish. Next one's yours. When it's good, you can have your hands full just getting all your rods in the water and keeping them in the water. But the day was slow, but we were finding a few. Sure he's not. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's on there. Perch. Oh. A little perch. That's probably a keeper, though. Yeah, it is. A little perch, Dave. Yeah. Yep. Better perch. Fish. Good fish. Much better fish. We'll find out here in a minute. Big perch. Yeah, Whoa. baby. Now we're talking. Whoa. That's what we're looking for, folks. They get a little bigger yet. Yeah, we get bigger than that. That was a standard one. <laughs> Jeez. That's a dandy. Nice job. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if we can get his brother. There we go. <laughs> Burt Lake is just over 400 acres, and it is a huge inland lake. It can be very daunting to come out here without any idea of where to go. You can look for shanty towns, of course, but just looking at a lake topography map can help and give you some ideas of where to start. We are in about 20 feet of water today, in some areas that Pat and Dave, well, they tend to fish here on the east side of the lake. <laughs> oh, God, he come right off, too. Nice. Did he just come right off? The line broke. Well, nice job, young fella. I wish right I was still young, Jim. Right this at is... last light here. <laughs> this is getting tiring. Jeez. See how light that hit? The whole key to that was that we, we didn't even know that was a tip-up. It was just flickering. Yeah, it never really did it take never, it down. It never went. That's the whole key to this tip-up. Well, our last fish of the day was on the ice. Dave is also the owner of the Thirsty Sturgeon, a bar slash restaurant here in town. And after spending some time there, well, we hit the water in the morning, hoping for good things. Well, here is our report from Burt Lake. It is freezing cold today. It is one degree, uh, almost no wind, and almost no fish. <laughs> we fished last night, uh, did okay. Probably an average day out here from what the guy said is six to 10 perch and maybe two or three walleye thrown in and last night we got a couple perch and a couple walleye conditions looked pretty good this morning but there is we haven't seen anybody out chasing tip-ups uh, Jenny was here earlier this week uh, for the Mark Martin school and just the way our scheduling kind of fell I was here a few days after that uh, uh, to fish with Dave and tell you what kind of rough conditions out here but it's um, just nothing going on just no fish biting I don't know what the deal is the fish that we Caught last night were really full, so maybe there's just a lot of food for them. Not sure what the deal is, but um, a lot of fun still hanging out with the guys. And um, but this week on Burt Lake was pretty rough. Well, it's about time. <laughs> it was a sad morning for a while. Oh, it's a nice looking perch, though. 
Not bad, it's about standard out here on Burt Lake. Um, you'll get them 12 to 16 inches approximately. What's that guy? He's uh, maybe a 10 and a half to 11. Okay. So we haven't nice. gotten any of the big ones, real big ones yet, but I'm happy to get a fish. So. Even when the fishing is slow, it's hard to beat a couple of days on Burt Lake here in Sheboygan County. Well, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill with Master Chef Jim Wood. We're here at our, actually our first kind of annual wild game dinner. And so we've got some guests in the room that uh, aren't normally here, but we're here to do some walleye cheek. So Jim, what are we gonna be doing with this uh, walleye tonight? Uh, we're gonna make, uh, first we're just gonna sear them off and then we're gonna make uh, kind of a citrus butter sauce for it. And then walleye cheeks, for anybody who hasn't had them, it's exactly that, walleye cheeks. So. Don't throw, don't throw them away. Keep them. They're the best. Now, how big of a walleye do you need to have a good cheek? A keeper. Really? Yep. That's it. So. Now, is this something you do at the restaurant? Yes, we have done walleye cheeks in the past a few times. Well, how do we get started here? What are we gonna do? We're gonna get our pan hot. Man, you got that thing really close to me. Holy cow! <laughs> Invasion of privacy. Right, so, <laughs> so we're gonna flour our cheeks here, and then we're gonna get a little salt on them. I'm gonna move over here and hopefully not get hit by the microphone from you. There we go. And what are you deep frying that in or, or pan frying it? Butter. Straight butter, yep. And what kind of flour? Uh, all purpose, but if you have rice flour or cake flour, something a little lighter, it'll come out a little crispier. Okay. Now, did you bring, did you actually take these cheeks out or did you have somebody do it for you? I'm gonna tell you I did. <laughs> um, I most definitely did not though. I'm sure I can do it. It doesn't look that hard. Now, for those of us that try pan frying at home a lot like this, what is, it seems like I always have oil flying all over the place. Am I doing it too hot? What am I doing wrong? I would say you're probably doing it too hot if you have oil flying all over the place. Yeah, I'm not trying to be facetious. Um, the best way is just to do a, a test batch. So get your, um, get your, your fat hot. Add your, your fish, one piece, or a little bit of water, and just see where it's at. If it if you add just a touch of water and it splatters back, good. If it goes all over the place and you've clearly got it too hot, if it doesn't do anything, you need to turn it up. Okay. And then what's in this fancy sauce you're going to put on it? Got our capers. Tomato. I think your pan's too hot. Nope, it's not. <laughs> White wine. I'm going to let that reduce. What exactly is a caper? It's a good question. Uh, it's a pickled part of a berry, basically a berry that grows from a tree. So, it's been salted and brined. Okay. How do you know when they're ready to go? When you've removed most of the liquid from the pan. So we've got that, now we're gonna add a little bit of that freshly squeezed orange juice and lemon juice. Let that work for a second. Almost there, now we're gonna go a little bit of heavy cream. Lots of ooing and eyeing. Okay, let's bring in our two official taste testers, Jenny Olson and this young fella, Bob Garner. My favorite part of the walleye. My favorite part. Mmm. Is that good? Hey. Right. Okay. Don't pass I need to come on some more of these recipes. No, no. We, usually we have a lot more than this. No, no problem with taking another one, is sir. Yeah, here, here, okay. Amazing, yeah, Jim. Yeah. Great job. Okay, and then the official name of this again was? A sauteed walleye with a citrus butter sauce. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out online next time you get a chance. You can do it a couple of different ways on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We're also on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, all at Michigan Out of Doors TV. Make sure you check that out when you can. We're letting you know where we are and where we're headed next in this crazy winter weather turns into spring. We've got a lot of exciting stuff happening here on the show. 
Well, that's right. Lots of good stuff coming over the next few weeks here in Michigan out of doors. And it's hard to believe that next week on March the 1st, we are going to have our big buck night down at Outdoor Rama. If you want to come see some big deer and hear some big stories, you might want to check that out. And then a couple of weeks after that, we're going to have big buck night east over in Grand Rapids at the Ultimate Sports Show. So some good things to mark on your calendar. There are always a lot of fun. And that whole weekend really at both of those shows is a lot of fun. Make sure you're joining us over the next several weeks. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Emma March 1st through the 4th at Novi's Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Emma in Novi March 1st through the 4th. By the Michigan Wildlife Council, entrusted with educating the public on how wildlife in Michigan's outdoors are managed and funded for the use and enjoyment of future generations. Learn how Michigan manages wildlife at hereforMIOutdoors.org. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munison, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbows.